Yahweh, 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 the King of the sea, generations after generation. Keep praising you, keep praising you. Yet no assumes you are. Then I asked the Lord, then I asked the Lord, oh, what name fits you? And he said, Yeah, generations, generations. Oh, after generation, keep praising you, keep praising you, yet no assumes you. Then I asked the Lord, then I asked the Lord, what name fits you, what name fits you? And he said, Yah, the hallowed one, Yah, the homely, Yahweh, 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 the king. Say, Yah, the hallowed one, Yah, the hallowed, Yah, the only one, Yah, the home. Yahweh, 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 the King of the, oh, you are Yahweh, you are Yahweh, oh, you are Yahweh, eh, you are Yahweh, you are Yahweh. Alpha and Omega, oh, you are Yahweh. Alpha and oh, say you are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. Eh, you are. Oh, you are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. Eh, you are. Oh, you are Yahweh, Yahweh, Alpha and Omega. You are, you are, you are, you are, you are Yahweh, Alpha and Omega. Say you are Yahweh, you are Yahweh, Alpha and Omega. You are, you are, you are, you are Yahweh, Alpha and all. Say you are, you are, you are, you are, you are Yahweh, Alpha and all. You are, you are, you are, you are Yahweh, Alpha and all. Say you are, you are, you are, you are, you are Yahweh, Yahweh, Alpha and Omega. Lord, you are, you are, you are Yahweh, Alpha and Omega. Oh, you are God, you are God. You will always be God. Say you are God, you are God. Yeah. You are God, oh, you are God. Oh, you will always be God. Say you are God, you are God. You are God. Lord, you are God, you will always be God, you are God, you are God, you are God, Lord, you are God, oh, you will always be God. Oh, you never ended. Oh, 
you never became it did not stop now it did not stop now oh and it won't stop now oh we sing oh you wake Lord, you are God, you will always speak, say you are God, you are God, you are, you are, you will always be, you will always speak, lift up your voice and worship the Lord. The Alo, the Anosa, the Andalalaba. We worship you, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We glorify your name, O Lord. We praise and exalt your name. You alone are worthy of all our worship. You alone are worthy of all our praise. We worship you, Lord. All our glory, all our praise is yours, O oh God. We bless your name, our fire and omega. You alone deserve all our worship and all our praise, O oh God. All our glory, all our praise we worship you, Lord. We bow before your throne, O oh God. For you alone are God, you alone are King. Ancient of days, we worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We bless your name. We praise you, Lord. We glorify and magnify your name, O oh Lord. We worship you, Lord. Yes, Lord, Alpha and Omega, this evening we say, Hallowed be your name, for you are God all by yourself. Ancient of days, you never change, you never age, you are still the same. All our worship and all our praise is yours tonight. We say you are king and you are above all. We worship and exalt your name. We glorify you and we hallowed you, O God. For you alone deserves to be worshipped, and therefore we give it all unto you. We say, be thou exalted, O God, be thou magnified, and be thou praised now and forever. In the name of our Lord Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. Shall we clap our hands and invite our pastor, Anthony, to teach us tonight. Wow, let's clap for our lady pastor. We love and enjoy how you lead us always into the presence of the Lord. All of the gifts a man can give to his brother or his sister is to be able to bring the presence of God down. And we thank God for the life of our lady pastor. She's always connecting us to the true room of God. Let's appreciate our lady, Pastor Teresa, God bless you so much. And you are looking very good. Yeah. We thank God. <laughs> thank you very much. We thank God so much for tonight. We bless God for everyone who has come, who has defied the rain, who has defied the tenders. We are here. People were hearing things. But in all days, we have come to the presence of God. I thank God that you didn't come to man. You came to God for God to also use a man to bless you. Clap for yourself for coming to church. Amen. Amen. Please, lady pastor, you can take your seat. 
I want to say a big thank you to God for my life. And I also want to thank God for the life of the church, most especially our prophet, Prophet Alex Owusu. Hallelujah. Let's appreciate the prophet with a clap. Let's clap for the man of God. One man's obedience is always a blessing of many. Abraham obeyed God. And God raised a whole nation called Israel. Prophet Alex Owusu has obeyed God. And some of us are walking in the grace that God called him with the commission and the grace. That's why I believe so much that your connection to the man of God is never a mistake. Hallelujah. It's never a mistake. Sometimes your meeting of the prophet looks very unspectacular. Uh, it's more spectacular. It doesn't look the usual supernatural. It looks very natural. Oh, I just met him. And it's, uh, is, it, is it just like that? Yes, it's like that. And that's how God wants to bless his children. Sometimes very simple things are the way God wants to bless his children. Amen. And I'm sure you'll be blessed tonight for coming to church. Amen. I also want to appreciate our mother personally, and I want to say that God bless that woman of God. I see strength. I see fortitude. I see grace. And I see in her the spirit of Christ every time. When you get very close to her, you realize that She's not sophisticated after all. She's very simple and straightforward. I want to bless God for her life and say, thank you, mommy. We bless you and love you very much. Many women have done well, but you have excelled them in taking our father through all the phases of ministry and still standing with the prophet. God bless you so much. We love you and say, God bless you. And I want to salute all the leadership the leaders of the church and everyone here, God bless you for coming. Amen. Amen. Today would have been a very special day for the prophet to teach us. Most especially when we know that tomorrow we are going to have our 30 days fasting at night. Tomorrow would have been the first day. And tonight would have been the night when the prophet would have opened that floodgate for us to move into the realms of fasting and prayer. I'm humbled by the gesture of the prophet that I should stand here to preach. I say, Daddy, God bless you so much. And I'm relying on the grace of God to help me to say the thing God would have said to the prophet in a way that I can also try. I know I can't be wearing his shoes, but I'm trusting God that he'll convey the spirit through the message, he will convey the thoughts that he has given to the prophet through the preaching. Then the preaching will be a lifting message to all of us for the coming 30 days fasting. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that Father speak through me. I humble myself that your spirit, your anointing, and your grace will help me. I'm just a vessel. I'm just a Standing on the altar of grace, asking that, Father, you will pour your oil, that I will teach your wisdom, I will teach your word, I will teach your knowledge, that understanding will be ours. For those of us who are here, Lord, we pray a special grace that everyone heart will be open to receive from you. I pray that, Father, for those who are watching online, distance will not be a limitation nor a barrier, but they will be blessed by the words they will receive. We thank you, Lord, for answer prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. I'm saying amen. 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 Why don't you clap for yourself for the last time? I, I want to start my message with um, something I received on my phone from administration. I love it. <laughs> I'm sure almost all of us got it, but I want to read it. It's a lovely message when the day was announcing what's happening tomorrow. He said, Beloved, eat all the eatables and drink all the drinkables. The fasting and prayer starts tomorrow at 6 a.m. Sharp. Every evening, we will meet in church at 6 p.m. to pray. 
don't be left out. Join the mid-year spiritual exercise. Hallelujah. It's a beautiful message I received from our mother, declaring that from tomorrow going, all of us are in the fasting mood. Hallelujah. No one can live his life from tomorrow like he lived his life today. So we are turning our cups, our, uh, our plates and everything upside down until 6 p.m. in the evening. Fasting and waiting on God for 30 days. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've realized in life that when you get used to something, it loses the value. When you get used to something, it loses the value. That's why even in marriage, when husband and wife get used to something, it gets to a point, the attraction, the fondness they have for each other becomes trivial. It's like you take it for granted. It's a human nature. Even for Jesus Christ, he grew up in Galilee. And the scripture said that when he went to Galilee, the people were like, ah, is this not the carpenter's son? This, this guy, we know him. We used to play chaskele, I'm sure, if they had it that way. We used to play chaskele on the street with him. And now you are telling us you are the Messiah. You see, Jesus Christ had always been with them, and they are taking his closeness to them to mean ordinariness. But every time there is fasting and prayer declared, it is to our advantage. Hallelujah. It is to our profit. The Bible says that all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and it is profitable for doctrine. So God's intent is that anything he has given the church is one of the winning weapons we have to win. Hallelujah. It's one of the things we have that will make us win in the battle of life. And it's got to a point that sometimes if you have been in church for more than 5 years, 10 years, 20 years, you begin to take things like it's normal. But I stand on the altar of the prophet and I declare to you that this 30 days fasting is not like the other fastings we've had before. This is a special fasting. Hallelujah. Can we all say special? It's a special fasting. Special fasting. Because the date is even different. The, the speakers we are having will not come in the same order that you know them. Probably the one who will speak the first day will not be the same person speaking on the second day. It will be a different person. That tells you that there is a different package for us in this year, 2023, mid-year fasting. Hallelujah. So you can count on God's word that it is for your blessing. Hallelujah. There are some of us who have become so used to food that when the mention of fasting, when we hear of fasting, it's like a taboo word. But let me say something to you. If Esau had delayed, has held or he had tried so much to hold himself a bit, the story would have been different. The Bible said that Esau came and he was dying of hunger. <laughs> he was dying of hunger. And his brother was telling him, I mean, the brother did not, he said, that's, that's why sometimes there are certain things you see the devil will tell you the truth. He said, give me by your birthright. And the guy is telling you that he's giving you something, but in exchange for your birthright. Some of us, healing is our birthright. Some of us, breakthroughs are our birthright. Sometimes, some of, some of us, our marriage is due. But because of the way we value fasting, we'll be like Esau. And I also said that when Esau was given, I like the way the Bible said that he ate, he drank, and he went away. And he despised the birthright. He had eaten a meal that contained his birthright. Eish. The very food he was eating, there was something inside. His birthright to, to, to greatness had been exchanged just in one bowl of food. Some of us who will be in the lineage of greatness, if only we will engage ourselves in this fasting. But we'll go like, I have sickness. Oh, doctor has declared that uh, fasting at a certain age, you should slow down. Yes, it is true. The same doctors have told us things, and we have realized that it has not even helped us. There was a woman in the Bible said that the woman had done everything with doctors for 12 years, and I'm sure the doctors were saying that this woman, we have built a house out of her. Uh, there, are some, there are some issues that people can take advantage of you. The woman with the issue of blood. 
She had gone to every doctor we had known in the world, in, in, in her world. But I was that her condition became worse. But until she contacted the supernatural, her life remained the same. I believe for you, if you not be like Esau, you will get your birthright to every miracle you are expecting from God in this month of June in the name of Jesus. And so that you will get it. Esau was eating. And after eating, he walked away. And something had taken place in the spiritual realm. That there had been an exchange, there had been a shift. Where he was now no longer working as walking around as a birthright holder. He was walking around like a servant. He was walking around like a servant. And Jacob supernaturally had taken the seat. That the priestly blessing, the grace for the Messiah to come from his line had been given to him. Jacob told him, he said, I want this thing from you for my birthright. Genesis 25. And at verse 38, he said, and he ate, and he drank, and he went away, and he despised the birthright. And Hebrews 12, verse 17 says that, now when, Jake, when Esau, the fornicator and the profane person, had realized that he needed the birthright, the Bible said that, and there was no place found of repentance for him, even though he sought it with tears. And the Bible said, and as that, he said that he had despised his birthright. May none of us despise our birthright through the lack of fasting in the name of Jesus. May none of us despise our birthright to the miraculous, to the supernatural, to the grace of God, all because we have not engaged ourselves in this 30 days fasting. I see the grace to fast over our lives in the name of Jesus. I see the grace of God come over our life as we fast in the name of Jesus. May that be yours. May the Spirit of God empower you that this 30 days fasting you not be like Esau. Hallelujah. If you, if you believe, you say amen. 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 For ye know that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. <laughs> How was he rejected? He said, he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully. So Esau was rejected. All because of one muzzle of bread. If you read the whole of Hebrews 12, 16, 17, it said that because of one plate of bread, the man was reduced to nothing. May you never be reduced to nothing in the name of Jesus. May your indiscipline in the previous years without fasting be changed into discipline in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We know of Jesus Christ, our own master Jesus. Sometimes, sometimes I said, this man is unique. The man who is without sin was fasting. <laughs> the man without sin. The man without sin was fasting. In fact, Luke 4 verse 1, it said, And now Jesus, being full of the Holy Spirit. Hello, Luke 4 verse 1. And Jesus, being full with the Holy Spirit. Can you imagine, Lady Pastor, if you are described as having the fullness of the Spirit, will you fast? Some of us, we don't have even a cup of the Holy Spirit in terms of His grace. But the Bible said that Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit, yet He was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Verse 2, and He said He was tempted and fasted for 40 days. The man without sin, the man full of the Holy Spirit, yes, it was a fasting machine. The man engaged himself in fasting to the point that any demon that came to him, they fell flat before him. May that spirit that entered Jesus for him to fast, even though he was without sin, may that same understanding and spirit become ours in the name of Jesus. That you will fast. Not because we are without sin. All of us, we are sinners. The one who is without sin was fasting. What about me and you? He said, and he fasted. Verse 14. Verse 14 of the same Luke 4. Verse 14. Verse 14 of Luke 4. Verse 14. He said, and Jesus returned. And Jesus Return in the power of the Spirit. Now the man returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee. 
And I love it. And I love the King James. It said, and the fame of him went throughout all the, uh, the region. And he taught in their synagogue and they were astonished at his doctrine. The man in Luke chapter 2 was sitting in the temple as a 12-year-old boy. And the Bible said that he was talking to the teachers of the law and he was asking questions and they were answering him. We never heard of Jesus being full of power. But after fasting for 40 days, the man who was full of the spirit had become the man full of power. After these 30 days, any powerlessness in you, you become powerful in the name of Jesus. Your powerlessness, you are empty of power. Things are playing with you. The, the, the situations that previously you could overcome, now they are dominating you. But once you fast, the grace that is upon you will increase from one level of grace to another level of grace. And you'll be walking in power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to walk in a different level of power. When Jesus fasted, he shifted from one level of grace to higher realms of power. And if you read down the whole of Luke 4, he was a Bible reader. But in verse 17, said that they gave him the scrolls. He read the scrolls and they were looking at him and said, this day, has this scripture been fulfilled in your years? And they said, they looked at him and said, this guy is not normal. They have always known him. People know about you. But after this fasting, something will change about you. Your looks will change. Your work will change. Where your destiny is will change. There will be a shift that your glory that has been covered shall be revealed in the name of Jesus. Fasting has great value for us. Hallelujah. So we'll be studying some of the things fasting does. I just want to touch on them. The things the prophet has taught us. Things the prophet has taught us. Amen. There's nothing new I'm going to say here. Amen. Are you with me? Are you with me? Jesus is our model. I've titled it The Impact of Fasting and Prayer. The Impact. The Impact of Fasting and Prayer. The Impact. The impact of fasting and prayer. What it does. The fasting. What fasting does for me and you. God doesn't waste our time. God is not an entertainer. God doesn't do experiment with things. Once he speaks, he performs. Hallelujah. And when God has declared that this 30 days fasting through the mouth of the prophet, there is something that must change. It's no ordinary that we are fasting. There is a significant blessing which God will give us as we fast. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Number one, in fasting, there is empowerment and renewal. There is what? Empowerment. Any great man of God will tell you that fasting Though as old as it is, is the primary way to increase your spiritual capacity. Amen. It's the primary way. You can be a student of the word, but if you don't have prayer and fasting, you are limited. You can be an evangelist who preaches to people, but your gospel will be a story to people. If you don't add fasting and prayer, you can be a very good singer. You can sing the song of Darlene Zetch. You can sing the song of C.C. Winers. You can sing the song of our own people, Joe Metal, um, Diana Hamilton. You can sing their song. But for your, the song to have the impact that we know of, you need to be a man who is empowered. Hallelujah. No empowerment, everything is ordinary. I've already mentioned that for Jesus in Luke 4 verse 1, he was full of the Holy Spirit. But after fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, the Bible said that, and Jesus returned to Galilee in power. 
So for you to return to the problem you run away from, you shouldn't return as a loser. You should return as a winner. Hallelujah. And now let us look at something in Second Chronicles, Corinthians, sorry, 4 16. Second Corinthians 4 16. For this cause, we faint not. Hello, we don't faint. Tell the person by you don't faint. Don't faint. Tell the person don't faint. For this cause, we don't faint. We do not faint. <laughs> And I love the last part. It said, though the outward man perishes, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. There are two types of people I'm looking at. I'm looking at the outward lady, Pastor Teresa. And I'm looking at the inward, which I don't see. Anytime anybody is walking around, there are two types of people in him. The people we know on the outside and the people and the person we all don't know. The person we're sitting by you is not just the fair lady or the dark man you are seeing. The person sitting by you is not just the dark person you are seeing. You. There is someone within him. And the Bible is that, the, that that inner man, when you fast, the outer body seems to be punished. It's like you are fainting. It's like you are losing yourself. But within you, it says that the inner man is being strengthened. Hallelujah. And you see, it is the inner man that brings the victory. It is the inner man that gets the work done. It is the one who is empowered spiritually who gets the victory. Jesus Christ said the flesh profited nothing, but the spirit gives life. So once you have a flesh, it won't win the battles of life for you. What will win the battles of life for you is the spirit within you. Hallelujah. And as you are fasting, you are building capacity. As you are fasting, you are, you are engaging yourself in, on the altar of prayer. And that altar of prayer will bring you empowerment. Hallelujah. And the scripture said that though the outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is renewed. It says Galatians 5 verse 16, walk in the spirit and you cannot fulfill the desires of the flesh. Some of us, our spiritual capacity is so low, so it has even affected our tolerance. I have noticed for me myself, the longer I stay in prayer and the word of God, I'm very tolerant. I'll be watching you. You can do certain things and my spirit can take it. But when I have spent less time in prayer, Waiting on God, fasting, the listing, partner sparky. Why? Because you see, the fruit of the spirit can be activated by prayer and fasting. Some of us, our flesh has become a sport child. Yogurt, you take it. Ice cream, you take it. Even at midnight, when it's 12 o'clock, you still eat. Your body has become so indisciplined that anything. You want it. Some of us have become so addicted to even simple things like Coke. Coke. You find a Christian rather telling you, me me no monsa, but me no Coke. And you can drink eight bottles of Coke in a day. You are no different from the one who is an alcoholic. But by fasting and prayer, you will cut yourself and build your spirit man. Who will be able to subdue the power of the flesh. Hallelujah. You see, we are building capacity. We are not only fasting to get. We are fasting to also change ourselves. That some of us, we have become so sinful. The things that we, are, we, we, we don't want to do, we are doing them. The things that we don't want to practice, we are practicing them. There was a guy I used to have some years ago. He came to me and said, brother, Tony, he said, yeah. He said, I'm masturbating. Pa. And that guy was a quiet person. Quiet person. Masturbating. I said, Charlie, me call back to my man, masturbating, sir. And there's no scripture you can quote. You can quote it. Flee, you fool ass. He will give it to you. He will give you the scriptures. But he said, he has tried, it's not working. And how would this work in empowerment? It is by prayer and fasting. 
So the spirit will control the natural. How will it control? It is when you do what we are saying that the 30 days you should do. In Romans 8, verse 1 and 2, it said, Therefore there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh. I love the verse 2. Listen to this. For the law of the spirit of life has made me free from the law of sin and death. He has made you free. So once you begin to pray, there's something called the law of the spirit of life. It enters into you. It begins to rewire your body to live an empowered life. Hallelujah. Some of us are struggling to pray for 30 minutes. But in this fasting and prayer, when you do it, the way it is going is 30 days. You don't do just one day. You go to 30 days. By the fifth day, sixth day, seventh day, you realize that there are certain demons who begin to leave you. They will leave you. Whether you pray about them or you don't pray about them, they will leave. Because there are fools that also attract certain spirits. Whether you, you know or don't know, it is a fact. Just like anointing you will bring the Holy Spirit, there are certain things also that can attract certain things in your life. That's what somebody can go to a, a, pharmacy, hospital, a pharmacy store and say, I want a certain drug that can make me sleep. Sleep is a gift. But you take a certain drug and it attracts and you sleep. <laughs> so you, you, you discipline your body and as you do that, it, it puts you in charge. Hallelujah. It makes your authority confirmed. It confirms your authority that, that this body, it belongs to God. Hallelujah. This body belongs to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. It says in Romans 12, it says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies. Some of us, we have been saved, but our bodies have not been presented. We are still holding our bodies. We can use it to smoke, lie, deceive, um, do all sorts of things. But once you engage yourself in fasting and prayer, what happens is that you subdue the passion and the appetite of the flesh. May that understanding be yours in the name of Jesus. May that understanding be yours in the name of Jesus. That you will become empowered. Isaiah 40, 28 coming. It said, have you not heard, have not been told to you that the everlasting God, the maker of the ends of the world, there is no searching of his understanding. And he asked, he said that the youth shall utterly fall and the young men shall fail. Verse 31, it said, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And look, listen to this. It said, they shall mount up with wings. Some of us, there are levels we need only to fly up. <laughs> there are levels you need to fly above them. And it can only come when you wait upon God in fasting. It said that they shall mount up with wings. It's not every problem you have to face. Some of them you have to fly over it. You have to go over it. You just have to ignore it. You just have to go right, because you have been given a, spirit, a, a spiritual empowerment that will take you above them. May that be yours in the name of Jesus. That as you fast and pray, as you wait on God, you will mount up with wings like eagle. You may be looking like you are playing with the chicken, but after the 30 days fasting, you begin to acquire the spirit of the eagle. That you don't play with ordinary things, but God elevates you to realms where you become great person in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Number two. When you fast and you pray, it's deliverance. Fasting and prayer is deliverance. Fasting and prayer is what? Deliverance. First one is empowerment and renewal. The second one we are seeing from the word of God is deliverance. Isaiah 58. Isaiah 58. Are you there with me? Hello, Isaiah 58. Verse 6. 
Is this not the fast that I have chosen? Hello? God is saying that he has chosen and ordained fasting for us. <laughs> there are people who are trying to water the word of God. They are watering it, diluting. They have put a dilution factor of 100% on it. So, Shanema, you can't edit scriptures. The scriptures cannot be broken. God is saying that he has chosen fasting for you and I. Don't try to negotiate yourself out of it. <laughs> he said, is this not the fasting I have chosen? So, God has ordained that we should fast. Hello? Can you tell the person by you, God has chosen for us to fast? It said in fasting, what happened? One, it lose the bands of wickedness. It lose. It lose him. To the bands of what? Wickedness. There are wicked forces in our own lives. But as you are fasting, they lose their hold on our lives. As you are fasting, the thing that is tied you down, that you can't go, will let you go. And I love it. It said it will lose him. So just announce to yourself that anything that has imprisoned and limited you, after you fast, you'll be losing in the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ said to the disciple in Matthew 17, verse 21, it said this kind does not go except by fasting and prayer. You can be a man of faith but you see, as that you will say, it, we don't take only one ingredient to prepare soup. Every soup that we all enjoy, you will find some ammonia inside. You find some Kobe. You find some tomatoes, pepper, and sometimes let, ladies will add some maggi cubes and other things, royco, just to bring flavor. So you cannot walk with God and say that I am exercising holy faith. Faith plus other things make you to be a victorious Christian. And he said that when you fast in the way God has chosen for us to do from tomorrow going forward, he said that what happened that in losing certain things that are binding us. Hello, let's go back to the Isaiah 58 verse 6. 58 verse 6, let's go back. He said to undo the heavy burdens. To undo the heavy burdens. So first, as you fast, it will loosen, Isaiah 58, verse 6, please. It said, is it not a fast I've chosen for you to loosen the band of wickedness, to undo heavy burdens? Some of us, depression, heavy burdens. You'll be there, you wake up, and you don't know what's making you sad. But as you are fasting, whatever spirit has placed a burden over your head, it will drop down in the name of Jesus. You will say amen. You don't believe it. I said it will drop down in the name of Jesus. He said that to undo the heavy burdens, no burden will remain heavy again. You will defeat them. Sometimes you, are, you, you see that you are in financial burdens. You will be in financial burdens. You don't know how to come out of that burden. But God says by his own design, he will loosen and also to remove heavy burdens. Hallelujah. And he said, and to let the oppressed go free. Amen. I love this part. Anyone who is oppressed, anyone who is oppressed, whether unknowingly or knowingly, there are things that just live. They will just live. You see, it's like a house. When you go to a new site, there are lizards, there are rodents, there are snakes, there are termites. When you go to a new site, but as human beings move there, they begin to bring electricity, begin to do the road. Then those things which were enemies in the environment will begin to go very far. You see, nobody goes chasing the snake. Nobody goes chasing the, the rodent or the lizard or the alligators. But what happened that the mere presence of human beings coming there is a threat to their existence. As you are fasting, certain things will just naturally will go without even you shouting at them. That will be your testimony in the name of Jesus. Certain things will let you go free. You have been, you have been doing deliverance on yourself in a house. Sometimes when you are doing deliverance, watch. Come in, come in, come in, come. Go, I won't go. Go, I won't go. Have you seen some before? 
you are casting the person say, I won't go. Then, then when a man of power, like our daddy, Prophet Alex, he comes and he does like this, in the name of Jesus, bah! and the thing leaves. What you are seeing as one second demonstration has taken him some all night and prayer and fasting. So sometimes the outside one minute is not just what we see. There had been investment in prayer and fasting. So as you are doing that, you yourself, you enjoy some freedom. Hallelujah. You enjoy some freedom. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Are you with me? So once you fast, you enjoy deliverance. And said so that, that every yoke be broken. Yoke, every yoke. You can try to analyze the yoke you are carrying. You don't know my problem, eh? You don't know my, my problem, eh? Hmm. It's not like your own, no. God is telling me to tell you that every yoke shall be broken. You, you, sometimes we try to make it look like God is no longer strong. But God, by his word, uh, is telling you that once you engage in this fasting, what happens is that yokes will be broken. Whether the yoke were put on you by the ancient or the current, it shall be broken. It said every yoke. So sometimes, just key your faith to these scriptures. That God is saying that as I fast, every yoke shall be broken. Any addiction that you have had in your life, whether present or in the past or recently acquired, by the power of God's word, they shall be broken in the name of Jesus. Some of us have moved ourselves into things we don't know our way out. As you pray and fast, God is giving you a sure word of prophecy that every yoke, every yoke shall be broken in the name of Jesus. Every yoke shall be broken in the name of Jesus. Point number three. Point number three. The impact of fasting. It brings the same Isaiah 58, verse 8. Isaiah 58, verse 8. Isaiah 58, verse 8. Then shall your light break forth. Then shall your light break forth as the morning. Then shall your light. Light. Everybody, everybody wants light. When there is light off, the whole place becomes quiet. You don't hear of anything. Typically of us, when the lights come back, what do we do? We all shout, hooray! Sometimes even adults can join. Then that's when you hear the cold store people complaining. My fish, my meat, my this, my everything is going bad. And God says something, you see, when something is breaking forth, it is actually about overcoming resistance. It's like something is trying to hold you not to shine. But as you fast, as you fast, any hidden grace potential in you begins to manifest. It says, your light shall break forth. Your light. You see, if you read the story of Esther very well, Esther was by law not mandated to go to the king. And if you have watched the movie of Esther, it's so interesting. It was so difficult for Esther to go to the king. But he said, organize a fast for me. Me and my maidens, we will fast for three days and we will go to the king. You see, what was happening was that he was just changing things to favor her. Her time had not come for her to go to the king. In fact, her favor was not due. But by the mere fact that she engaged herself in that three-day fasting, the Bible said that when the king saw, saw Esther at entering the royal palace and had opened the gate, he said that, the king just lifted the scepter and said, you are accepted. Why was it so? There were laws that restricted the king, but there was something that was also working, and that spoke in favor for Esther. May the light that you need come for you in the name of Jesus. Any light that needs to make you excel, may that light come for you in the name of Jesus. Some of us, we are doing very well, but there's no glory on it. You, you are deliberately overlooked. Deliberately. Overlooked. Everything you are doing, see that you are shut that past, say I do where you don't want to mind you. It's like our blaster. Sometimes people talk, hey, the Ghana's have, Ghana have talent. Ghana, we have talent. 
But for you to be chosen to play for the Blasters, sometimes you need to go and see an uncle and a GFA, somebody before you are introduced. But you see, when you don't have helpers, the only thing that will help you is God. The only person who will help you is God. And when God is helping you, there is no resistance. Hallelujah. And he said, you shall break forth. All of us will break forth as we wait on God in fasting and prayer in this month of June in the name of Jesus. The next thing he said, your health. Your health shall spring forth speedily. Hey, hey. There, there are medical benefits in fasting. Lady P, there are medical benefits. Oh. Contrary to what some of us have learned, it says that your health shall spring forth speedily. There's a woman in the Bible called Anna. The Bible said that she married and after seven years, the husband died. Then she remained a widow to the age of 84 years. In Luke chapter 2, 84 years. And the woman served God at the age of 84 with fasting and prayer. The woman served God in the temple, fasting and prayer. And, then, and how can somebody be serving God with fasting and prayer? At her age, she couldn't do much. But by her prayers, she was shifting things in favor of God. Hallelujah. You see, that is why age cannot be used as an excuse only why you shouldn't fast. Oh, me, I have to this. You see, at your grace and at your level, you can do something. Probably if you are at your age, let's say 60, 70, you eat by 8. Maybe you can trust God that you can do up to 10 and take your medicine. Maybe you can trust God. Maybe, oh, at 10 o'clock, because of medicine, you trust God that you can do up to 12. As you are daring and doing it, the grace of God will help you. My mother used to have a certain medical condition. She, if she, she had not eaten, I'm talking about 15, 20 years ago. If you tell a mother to fast, her sickness will come. Then some of these things got into her head. And said she would practice it and see if God will back his word. If the woman wakes up in the morning, she will be shaking. Like that, my mother, shaking, just like that, shaking. So most times, you find her in her bag with some biscuits, some water, or a cake, or something that will just quickly take care of the, the shaking. To the glory of God, when she understood that God has a medical advantage for her in fasting, she did it. And to the glory of God, she can stay up to midday, up to one o'clock, up to three o'clock. She will not have eaten anything, and the thing will not come. Why? Because God said that when you do it, your health will come. Hallelujah. Sometimes you, you, you have to ask yourself, do I believe God's report, or I believe in the report of the Lord? You see, it's all a matter of faith. I can't come and superintend over your faith if you believe that what the doctor is saying is true. You can believe and work with it. But I'm giving you what God says. Amen. I'm giving you what God was says. Uh, I cannot say contrary to what I've seen in scripture. He said that your health will come. So if there's any sickness you are battling, you can overcome it. If there's any sickness that is hidden in your body that no one knows, like Naaman, we are praying that in this 30 days fasting, that sickness will be subdued. That sickness will be dominated in the name of Jesus. That you will come and share testimony. That when Prophet Alessio also declared that in June we are doing 30 days. And you did it. After you did it, now you can't find the symptoms any longer. You are working as a free person. That shall be your story in the name of Jesus. He said your help shall come forth speedily. Amen. There are many testimonies of those who have done that. And body toxins... Things that are, you see, that's why in English we say break fast. When you wake up, break fast. It means that you slept and you were fasting. So when you woke up, you broke the fast. That period where you are not eating, the body revives itself. It begins to go through metabolic changes. I'm not doing medicine here. It changes the system. It washes away certain things which are not good. So the longer sometimes you fast, you put the intestines, the organs to rest. Can you imagine you are running around uh, across sports stadium every day? It's exercise, all right. 
It's good to exercise, but it gets to a point you wear out the muscles. So too much of everything is bad. So you have been eating from January. In this church, there are some people who have not fasted the whole of this year. I know. There are some who haven't tried it. They have lived their life from January 1 till now. Every day, food is in the stomach. But we thank God that from tomorrow, you become wiser. Hallelujah. And wiser to the point that you will fast. And you will say, I'm a child. You will say, no, oh, I'm waiting when I, when I start working. Start now. Make investment in prayer. Make investment in fasting. And there are certain things that by your fasting and prayers, you would have cleared ahead of you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let's look at the next point, what fasting does. Fasting gives divine direction. Divine direction. Acts 13, 1 and 2. Acts 13. Acts 13, 1 and 2. Acts 13, 1 and 2. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets. Let's all say prophets. Okay, let's say it loud. They are in the church, what? Prophets. Now, and also teachers. Barnabas, Simon, that was called. Is it Niga or Niger? Niger? Is it Niga? Prof. Pro professor. Niger. So there was a Nigerian in the Bible. <laughs> oh, those who do social studies. Is it Niger? Oh, so there are there are blacks in the early church too. Some of us who think the black one was not there. There was a black man in the church. His name is called Simon the Nigerian or Nigerian. So there was a black man there. We thank God that the black man was there. And Lucius or Cyrene, a Manain, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and so on. Look at, look at this list of people. There was a prophet, there was a teacher, and they mentioned their names. And every detail the Holy Spirit gives is for a purpose. Barnabas was not a small man there. Um, Simon was not a small person there. And Tetrarch and Saul, Saul before he was called Paul, the Paul you know, before it was so, and it was also there. But look at verse 2. There's something beautiful that I love there, verse 2. Verse 2, it said that, and now they ministered to the Lord and fasted. They ministered to the Lord and fasted. These are giants of faith, but they, they, they knew the right key to use. You see, the fact that you have a title to your name shouldn't make you become older than fasting or let me say about fasting. Hello, am I speaking well? Uh -huh. You can be called the prelate of a certain faith. You can become the mother superior or the father superior. But look at them. They were fasting. Paul was fasting there. Uh, Barnabas was fasting there. All the great people we know of in the New Testament, they were all fasting. They said that they ministered to the Lord and they fasted. You see, and as they were fasting, look at what God did. And the Holy Ghost said, and the Holy Ghost said, some of you are looking for divine direction. You want God to talk to you. There are occasions that you just need God to meet you at that point where you are doing something that you are lost. It's not that, it's, you see, I always tell the people who go to school here, the Holy Spirit in you can be your teacher. Can be your teacher. To the glory of God. One year before we wrote our final exams in school, I knew the question by inspiration. I was sitting down there, was telling this question will come. This question, it will come my final. And I wrote it and I went to tell our teacher, the physics master. I said, physics master, I'm confident that this, this question will come. He said, how do you know? I said, I just feel like it, it will come. But then I had fasted for one week and I had organized the SU people that all of us should fast for one week. And we did it. So, as a student, my focus was not on job. My mother was paying my fees. My father was paying my fees. So, my focus was on the book. So, I was just praying, praying. And as I picked the ghast, we, we used to call it ghast. Is it ghast? Yeah. I picked the physics ghast and the chemistry ghast. 
and the yellow book, he must, the yellow book. Then the questions were just dropping in my spirit that this question will come. This question will come. And so I used to say, I'm sure it will come. And lo and behold, ditto, ditto. They opened the faces, practicals, bram, first question. And everybody was looking, I was sitting at the back. My name is O. So I was sitting at the back. And they all looked at him and said, hi, I'm so. It's, it's just that as you wait on God, your spirit becomes sensitive. Hallelujah. Your spirit becomes what? Sensitive. Some of us, we have the spirit of God in us. And thank God we have a prophet. So naturally, it should be easy for you to pick certain sensations. Hello. Should it should natural, natural. If your mother is a, is a baker, should you ever wonder where, where you get bread from? If your father is eh, selling chichinga, should you struggle to get meat to chop? So we are working with a prophet. And the way to activate is not by the title. But he said, and they fasted, and the Holy Ghost said. So divine direction follows those who fast. God is speaking. I always give this example. There is Peace FM walking in this room as we are speaking here. As I'm preaching, Peace FM is moving through the room here. Joy FM, if you have a TV set and you put it on and you tune to the right frequency, you get it. You can watch right now. Is it Champions League? Are they playing football today? Which team? West Ham and Florentina. The guy, the guy, the guy, they town. Well, they are playing Champions League, but we can't see it. Can you see it? But the moment you tune to the frequency, probably 99.7, and you are the right dial, whether you are black or tall or short or fat or slim or born today or born tomorrow, it will respect you because you are falling into the frequency. So you see, as you fast and wait on God, God will tell you what to do. There is one man I was I was I recently on LinkedIn, in, in LinkedIn I was there, and as I was scrolling there, my heart told me, this man send him your business card, like the e, the e business card. I, I I had that premonition three days ago, and I I slept over it, and again the thing said send this thing to this man, and I I am refusing, and this evening, I was checking my LinkedIn again. An idea and the thought came again, send the this thing to this person. So just when I was driving, I said, no, let me push the this thing. Pam. You see, God has a way he wants to connect you. There are things you are doing that you think others are also doing, so you are also doing some. Some of us, we chose courses because our friends chose. Some of us are doing things because our friends are doing it. It's like uh, people say, oh, they are traveling, so I also tra want to travel. It's not like that. It's like everybody is doing as they want to do some. Now they say everybody is wearing kente, so I also start wearing kente. That's not how we live our life. You must be led. Hallelujah. You must be what? Led. You must be led. You must be led. And that is what is causing a lot of problems. Most of us are running very fast by the wrong lane. Have you seen a painter? One day I went to a site. A painter placed a ladder by somebody's building and painted a house. When he finished, he said there is a wrong house. He has painted somebody's house. It's the wrong house. He placed a ladder there and painted that side of the house. He said, sorry, sorry. And then I had him say, painting. We are my neighbor. A compound house. That side no painting, you know. And you make a new deal, you know. And he painted the other side. Wrong direction. He had missed his, his way out. So you need direction to do the right thing. Hallelujah. Hello. And he said, and the Holy Ghost said, when you read Isaiah 58, I, I pray that all of us will meditate on that. He said, and the Lord shall guide you continually. Continually. You shouldn't be stranded as a child of God. That you don't know your left from right. That you have found yourself in a situation where you are perplexed, you are confused, you don't know what to do. At every material moment, the Holy Ghost has a word for your situation. There is no situation you are going through that God hasn't got a word for it. Is it a marital problem? God has a word that will solve it. Is there anything you are going through that you want God to speak to you? In this fasting and prayer, God can speak to you. And when you move your leg, it will launch you into greater things in the name of Jesus. I'm saying the name of Jesus. I want to end it lastly with one point. Then I end. It makes you to demonstrate the love of God. Isaiah 58. 
Isaiah 58. Verse 7. Is it not to deal your bread to the hungry? <laughs> some of us, when we are fasting, we pile food. Oh, somebody gave you fruit, ice cream in the morning. Oh, the next thing, oh, somebody gave you some pizza, the bigger pizza, instead of then go and pack it. But you see, God has shown us that in fasting is a demonstration of love. Amen. 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 Imagine your boss having his birthday tomorrow morning. And they are supposed to share the food for 10 people. And you are part of the 10. And you can't go and announce, oh, may I fast in tea. Sometimes we'll go there and say, ah, Christmas comes but once. Make I chop today. And then they will take the fast. But you see, if you are spiritually discerning, you pay the price like Daniel did. Daniel was given palace food. He said, me, I won't chop. I will fast. I'm not talking about taking money, go and buy food and dash. But I'm talking about only chances being said when they say who deeper now say we enjoy, but you forfeit. As you are doing that, the Bible said that as you are doing that, you are giving opportunity for others to enjoy, and you are demonstrating the love of Christ. Nowadays, we have lost the art of loving ourselves. Yes, we have lost it. Now we don't love ourselves again. We are too careful with each other. Now, when you are dealing with people, you are always, you have to scan, assess before you interact. Because life has become some way. But if, let's say, breakthrough prayer chapel, we are talking about love among ourselves. This is what God is saying. He said that when you fast, what happens is that you will naturally become sensitive to the needs of others. May that be yours in the name of Jesus. May that be yours in the name of Jesus. That doesn't mean you are going to become a beggar, but you realize that Apart from not wasting money on things, materially, probably, there's somebody who actually needs what your boss has given you as food. And as you are passing by, you give it to the person who hasn't got it. As you are doing that, I would say that you are doing what God wants. That, that, that he was referring to um, the later Mark, I see me a printing press. I didn't put this in scripture. It said that when you are fasting, you deal your food to the poor. And it said that you give to those who are naked, and you cover him, and you hide, and you don't hide yourself from the person of your own flesh. Hallelujah. So, God is speaking to us that in this fasting period, demonstrate the love of God also. Amen. Demonstrate it. Don't use fasting as a, may ye fast in you, may ye fast in you, may be broken, be changed, be renewed. Some of us fast to go and fight and, and have argument. Or you're fasting to go and argue with his brother. He has a sibling issue. And because of, but, but, but if you have the spirit of Christ, there's a way you can solve it. But I say, me, you're fasting. So his fasting is about killing that his brother. But God is also saying there are souls to be won. There are Christians, there are, this year we are going out for mission. We can pray. As part of our fasting, oh God, this year when we embark on missions, let us win souls. Let us win souls for you, oh Lord. Let us win souls. Let that be your prayer topic and watch what God will do. And watch what God will do in your life as you demonstrate the love of God. God bless you for coming tonight. God bless you for receiving the word of God. God bless you for listening to me. I respect and honor everybody who is here. Lady Rev, God bless you so much for coming. Amen. Preaching to big people is not easy. Amen. We thank God for his word. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for speaking your word to us. I pray that your grace will bless every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. And once again, I want to say thank you to the prophet and our lady, Rev. Mary Regina. God bless you so much. Amen. Let's continue to appreciate our pastor by clapping. Oh, let's clap our hands and appreciate our pastor. That was a very powerful and detailed teachings. Most of the times when it's fasting and prayers, most of us run away. We don't see most of us. But as we've learned tonight, there are so many benefits of fasting and prayers. If you want to hear God 
and hear him clearly. Don't be eating all the time. Be sensitive to the things of the spirit by fasting and then by praying. And tomorrow, God willing, we are starting our fasting. So join us. Join the fasting. Amen. Shall we please lift our hands into our wallet, our presence, and take a good offering to bless the Lord.